Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues This is Session 6, Part 3 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance where Jesus and Mary continue discussing God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, presenting further related information about the laws of compensation, focusing on the analogy of reaping what is sown in kind. This session was recorded on the 31st of October 2017 from 11 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Compensation, examples of sowing then reaping in kind. So in this entire session, we've been talking about what it means to reap in kind in relation to the laws of compensation. Mm. And to close out this session, I thought it would be very good to talk about some really real life examples, very specific examples of um, how we would reap in kind in relation to certain types of behavior. And we've defined behavior as uh, words, thoughts, uh, actions, intentions, desires, anything within that range, mm. um, how we would reap in kind, how mm. we would be compensated in kind for those types of behaviour. Mm. So we'll run through in a, in a brief moment some, we'll start the specific examples. Mm. But before we start, we should mention that what we're doing is actually talking about compensation in kind. So we're not giving an, an exhaustive list of all the kind of compensatory rewards or penalties that we might encounter. For that particular behaviour. For the particular behaviour, yeah. yeah. It's just yeah. about reaping in kind. Yeah. Um, and it's not even all of those. It's just no. to, it gives an, it gives, for people to understand or to give them a bit of an idea of the flavour of you know compensation in terms of what happens when it's reaping in kind. In kind, yeah. So we can have really sort of a real life example to go. Okay, what's this really all about? Yeah. And the uh, the other thing we need to um, place here as a bit of a reminder is that there is a difference between the way that God's laws operate upon us and human beings interact with each other. Mm. <laughs> so sometimes humans reward things through their personal use of their will yes. um, out of harmony with love that God is simultaneously penalizing within us. Correct. And that's why sometimes it can seem a bit confusing yes, uh, although... if we're not wishing to be yeah, personally it's aware. usually not that confusing. We normally see that the person in the world, uh, the, the world does reward this behaviour. Yes. And frequently we're only interested in a reward mm. from the world. Mm -hmm. So so frequently our priority system is rewards from the world come first. Yeah. You know, or usually before then it's selfish rewards come first. Yeah. Rewards from the world come next. <laughs> then anything else that happens, happens. Yeah. That is the way we see things. And <laughs> this cares? is not yeah. the way the law of compensation works. Yeah. The way the law of compensation works God's laws are uppermost. Everything is re re revolving around the truth and the and the accuracy and the predictability of God's laws. Mm -hmm. And it's to do with being loving from God's point of view, not yeah. from the world's point of view. Yeah. So the world has, as we would admit, the world has very different uh, points of view when it comes to what's loving. Yes. And frequently we get rewards from the world for being unloving from God's perspective. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And obviously, compensation is going to be about whether we're being unloving from God's perspective rather yes. than the world's. Yes. So we're going yeah. to speak in these examples about what does happen on earth so that people can relate to it. But we're really looking at um, the rewards or pe penalties from God's the operation of the way God's laws yeah, work. Yeah, from the operation of God's yeah. law, not yes. not what the people on earth will, might give us rewards or penalties for. If we can just give a brief illustration of that, telling the truth on the earth is not very frequently rewarded. No. But God rewards it every time. Yes. <laughs> so, so, in fact, on earth, if you tell the truth, frequently it is penalised. Yeah. And uh, and and so, you know, if we just measure things from the perspective of what happens on Earth, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be severely disappointed, in yeah. fact, with the discussion. And yeah. uh, and also we're going to find that once we pass, all of our entire world is turned upside down. Mm -hmm. uh, our definitions of what is good are actually bad mm -hmm. from God's perspective. Our definitions of what is bad frequently are good mm -hmm. from God's perspective. And so you know, often we'll have our entire world, our, our entire 
belief systems completely opposed once we pass. Yeah. Mm. It's yeah. far better to get in line with them now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and mind whether... you, if everybody did, then the world's definition of love would be God's definition yes. of love. And then... Telling the truth would be rewarded. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but as we talk about in these examples, um, tell, say telling the truth, for example, if we commit to that, from a heart, it soul is based rewarded because of God's laws, exactly. still, but it's not always rewarded. No. So, you know, because it, of man, humans' definition of love. Yes, mm. we might weather some opposition from, from humans, humans <laughs> but there's a lot of other rewards personally for ourselves yes. that we do begin to experience. Exactly. So. And also we often experience from people from who, around us. Around yeah. us as well. Not yeah. everybody on earth is bad. No. And many people do like to hear the truth. Yeah. And so, you know, naturally those people will be attracted to us. So, yeah. so the reality is uh, many of the you know, penalties seemingly from the earth mm -hmm. are not really, uh, well, in my, in my, you know, in my opinion, we shouldn't even bother considering, considering them really, yeah. just like many of the rewards from earth, we shouldn't really consider them too much either. Mm. The key is what does the law demand, yeah. God's laws, which are immutable, mm -hmm. unchangeable, mm -hmm. predictable and reliable. Uh, what do they demand? Yeah. And if we work in harmony with that, then our happiness for the future is guaranteed, even though we might have some short term disappointments from people yes. on Earth who, who often will be in a different condition and therefore demand something different of us. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Compensation in kind by caring for the natural environment. So here I'll read you an example scenario sure, and yeah. ask you to respond. So obviously a positive example coming yes, up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What will I reap in kind when I take steps to minimize the waste and pollution that I create through my habits and lifestyle? So for example, physical things like minimizing my plastic use, recycling, growing my own food, uh, taking physical actions that support the regeneration of the natural environment. Mm. Well, firstly, remember we understand that compensation acts upon attitudes. Mm -hmm. that, that's what God's trying to correct, the attitudes. So let's look at the attitudes here. Yes. The attitudes are, I've got an attitude of self-responsibility. Yeah. I've also got an attitude of care for myself, care for my brothers and sisters, care for the future children of the earth yep. and care for the environment. So that's that's quite a lot of really good attitudes. <laughs> yes. So I'm saying I'm responsible for the waste that I create. I'm responsible for the effect of the waste that I create. Uh, that's a self-responsible attitude. Yep. And my I'm going to do something about it. So now I'm showing love and consideration for me and my environment and people to come. Yeah, okay, and obviously so I'm now concerned about the rapidity at which the waste I create can be decomposed, decomposed and so dealt I'm, with. I'm dealt with. And yeah. so I'm really concerned about all these matters. Yeah. And so, so I don't treat them. I don't treat them in a blase manner. I'm serious about mm -hmm. it because I understand the long term effects that this is having. But also uh, because many people last uh, last hundred of years have not have not done this. Mm -hmm. uh, that already humankind is experiencing the results a lot mm -hmm. of the negative results of not doing it. So, so let, the positive yeah. results are great, aren't they? Yes. It's like, so, so this demonstrates really good attitude. Yes. A, a, a voluntary desire. Mm -hmm. Not enforced. Not by enforced by else. anybody else. A yeah. voluntary desire to take full responsibility for your waste yeah. is, is demonstrating a very caring attitude for yourself and for others. So obviously there's going to be some pretty good. <laughs> so let's talk benefits about in kind. <laughs> yes, let's talk about the rewards in kind that I would experience. Yep. So uh, a sustainable future for those currently living and for their children. Yes, yeah, so instead of my future being I'm being instead of being worried about where my next clean breath is going to come mm -hmm. from, you know, my clean air and my clean water and my clean food is going to come from. I won't be worried about that because it'll all be clean already. I've yeah. already, <laughs> I've already looked after all of that. Yes. Now, the, obviously, that would apply if there's a group of us doing that. What? Um, and so we'll keep going. We'll talk about because it's not necessarily that me here is my little recycling container in my whole community, the only one. I will be having cleaner air just by the fact that my one 
is not contributing to a worse state. Mm. That's right, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, well, obviously, if you've planted trees and everything around your specific environment, mm -hmm. those produce are producing oxygen in your locale. Yeah. Obviously, you personally benefit from that. Yes. Um, and if, if you've planted your own food and you, you know what's gone into your own food, then you personally are benefiting from that. Yes. So obviously there, there are immediate personal benefits to mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And sure, there's a collective issue here as well, mm. obviously, mm. But, but there are personal benefits from you, just you doing it, yes. even if nobody else does. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so then obviously I'll be, I'll be living in a world that's actually better than it could have been and that's yeah and quite... you've participated in making it better yeah so that, that's a good feeling uh, yeah. obviously you'll also have a healthier personal lifestyle and diet mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so that means that your body probably is going to function better mm -hmm. you probably be faced with less diseases that come mm -hmm. about because of the environment pollution or pollution in the environment and, and also so enabling the possibility through my use of my will to ha for others to have a healthier diet because the pollutants mm. that I would have been creating and adding to the atmosphere and the water systems and things is not there. That's so right. That's right. their food sources are less contaminated through my own actions. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. 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 There would also be a much deeper emotional connection with the environment itself. So yes. in other words, you'll now start caring about whether whether all animals survive. Mm -hmm. you, you instead of instead of like what I notice a lot is a is a is a a society that is just focused on financial stability and yep. nothing else, which most Western societies are. That's their primary focus. Yeah. Uh, and and or societies that are just focused on getting enough food to live, mm -hmm. which which applies to most third world societies. Yeah they will engage in a high level of environmental destruction mm -hmm. in order to support those concepts. Yeah. If I am not no longer concerned about my own survival because I'm providing, you know, the, of the environment for my own survival and I'm no longer concerned for finances above my uh, above the care of the environment. So I value the preservation of the environment above, above finances. finances. Yeah. In other words, I'm willing to spend money in order to preserve the environment. Now I have the benefit of that by being closer connected to the environment. So now I know more about what the environment's doing mm -hmm. and how it's responding to my behavior as well. Yeah. So, and, and this, as it, as it comes as a result of that, I am now more closely aligned to God's viewpoint of the environment. Mm -hmm. God wants us to live in a pristine environment. So, so now I've got a closer relationship with God potentially as well mm -hmm. because of, of my care of the environment. And so that there's some big substantial uh, yes. rewards for, for engaging in this environmentally friendly, shall we say. And, and not so, it's not just friendly, it's environmentally sustainable and environmentally uh, building, uh, yes. uh, growing the environment. So, yeah. so instead of destroying it, I do the. I, I don't just sustain it like it is. I improve it. Yes, is is really the attitude we need to have. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. And so you mentioned this deeper connection with God because I'm also more emotionally connected with God's creation, which will automatically bring me closer to God. Mm -hmm. um, but then after I pass. This is when the real rewarding kind becomes tangible, doesn't it? Many times, yes. And obviously, remember when we pass, we our soul condition to a great de degree determines our location. Mm -hmm. If I've cared for my environment, then it's highly likely when I pass, assuming no other severe degradations of my soul, yeah. um, it's highly likely when I pass that my environment will be fairly pristine in comparison to what it would have been yeah. if I didn't care. Yeah. And uh, and so that means I, once I pass, instead of going from a relatively good environment to a terrible environment, I'm going from a relatively good environment to a beautiful environment. Yes. And that, yeah. that of course, will uh, give me a lot of encouragement uh, for my positive behaviour. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So a lot of benefits in kind, just for even a simple, uh, oh. Oh, it's not necessarily simple, but what I would call a um, relatively easy shift in the soul condition. Yes, what I've noticed with most people is most people, uh, even though their environment might not be very pristine, um, most people do a number of things. 
Firstly, they usually store their money rather than spending it on the environment. Mm-hmm. Secondly, it, they go to a pristine environment and destroy it. Mm-hmm. In other words, they impose a whole lot of you know, negative things on the pristine environment to finish up destroying it. Yeah. And, and when an environment is destroyed, they leave that environment instead of fixing it. Yes. They leave that environment and move on to a more pristine one mm-hmm. to destroy that. Mm-hmm. So in some ways, we're like a cancer. Yeah. And humans are a bit like a cancer in that regard to the environment. Mm-hmm. We, we eat the good yeah. and turn it into bad. Yeah. And then we l- don't cure it. No. We, we leave yeah. it. And, yeah. and go on to eat more of the good yeah. and turn it into bad. Yeah. And uh, this is something we must stop. Yes. And if we loved ourselves yeah. and we loved our children, mm-hmm. we would stop. Yeah. Yeah. And we would, um, it, so if we did take, you did stop and take on this attitude that we've been discussing, my compensatory benefits in kind, in that I'm caring for the environment, my environment is better. I want to um, restore the environment, not take from it. Uh, my my lifestyle is better and I enjoy cleaner air and fresher water and all these things. Mm-hmm. All of those things are compensatory benefits in kind that I would begin to experience almost immediately. Mm-hmm. Uh, and other parts of the compensation, the rewards of my personal well-being and happiness would be immediate. Yes. And then when I pass... It will be even more pronounced. Yeah. yeah, and it's highly likely I'll be living a self-sustaining life where mm-hmm. I'm self-responsible for my own food and my own water, um, and therefore not reliant on the you know ver- the, the variations that occur in the economy or other factors. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Compensation in kind for destroying the natural environment. So this is a negative example <laughs> of how compensation operates. Um, or an example of how compensation operates to penalise us, I should say, because it's not yeah. really negative. It's no, it's that... all positive, isn't it? Yes. Because it, what it does is it, uh, is, we're using it as a, and it, when we say negative, we're saying we're unloving. This yeah. is an unloving example where, yeah. where we're being unloving. Yeah. But, but all of them are positive in, 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 to, a, to a degree in, the, in that they all result in some outcome, which if we're in, if we respond to it, can improve the situation. Exactly, yeah. 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 So what will I reap in kind when I consume without regard for the impact that my habits and lifestyle have on the natural environment? Well, again, we we need to understand the compensation laws are trying to change our attitude. So what is our attitude if we do this? Well, firstly, our attitude is very selfish. (laughs) We're only concerned for our own happiness and welfare. We're not concerned for the short or long-term effects that it has on other people. And so we're being very, very selfish. Mm -hmm. Now, that's an attitude God wants to correct. Yes. (laughs) It it actually shows even a lack of regard for myself, doesn't it? A lack of love for myself because I'm basically in a um, self-destructive cycle. I'm destroying the very thing that is sustaining my life. I'm fouling where I'm living, (laughs) (laughs) literally. Yeah. (laughs) And so naturally that's not a lack. That is a lack of love of self. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not caring for any of God's creation, be it um, other people or animals, plants, anything. Not caring for the future. So in other words, I'm not caring for my children Mm -hmm. or the children of humanity. Mm -hmm. I'm making it more difficult for them. Mm -hmm. And I'm also promoting, just by the fact of living in this attitude and maintaining it, I'm promoting that same kind of selfishness in others around me. Imagine if I have a child now, the child is very open to my attitudes and Mm. so they're very likely to take them on from a young age. Yeah, don't care, you know, throw their rubbish out the windows Mm -hmm. or drive along in their vehicle or, you know, just foul their environment. Throw away one toy and want a new one immediately. Just not caring about anything, how we produce things. So because we're so financially oriented often, we, we don't care how something is made. Mm-hmm. Um, so we don't care about its ability to be decomposed yeah. uh, or, or transferred into some other thing uh, once we've finished its use. Yeah. And these are all things we need to be concerned about. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So these are the attitudes that God would be attempting to correct yeah. through penalty. Mm. In yes. kind, so yes. of the same type, this kind of attitude 
there's going to be the same flavour in my penalties. Yes. So what kind of penalties would I encounter? Well, I'm going to be living in a polluted and dirty environment. Yeah. My water is going to be dirty. My mm -hmm. food is going to be dirty, like, you know, with impurities in it. Yeah. You know, they're finding now that, you know, most of the food taken from the ocean has plastic in it, for example. Yeah. Uh, these are all the subsequent results of, of of us fouling our environment. So that's the compensation for having this attitude is that yeah. now I become less healthy yeah. um, because I haven't valued the health of any yeah. anyone else or the environment around me. Yeah, when yeah. we eat meat, we're like we're doing that. No true environmentalist can be a meat eater. Mm. To be on, mm. honest, it's impossible to be a true environmentalist and eat meat yeah. because eating meat destroys a large amount of the planet yeah. wholesale, yeah. You, and and uh, we can produce a lot more food in a lot less area if we don't eat meat. Yes. And, uh, and and so the destruction on the planet from eating meat is very, very great. Mm -hmm. And we need and and we need to see this, you know, that it's, it's going to create a terrible environment. In the end, if we're not careful, the environment is going to be so bad that whole swathes of land will be unproductive. And well, that's already occurring. Which is already occurring. Yeah. We'll turn green areas into deserts and that's, that's already, already occurring. occurring. And, uh, and on top of that, we won't in the end have enough oxygen even mm -hmm. because if we foul the ocean, which is the main generator of oxygen for our planet, man, that, that's going to have a devastating effect on even us being able to breathe, yes. let alone have a, uh, have a good lifestyle. So, you know, these are serious matters that need our consideration. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and if we don't do anything about it, this is going to be the result. Yeah, mm. yeah. Okay, um, and yeah, I'm making it a struggle for any part of God's creation to survive, aren't I? You are. You know, what generally happens is the most sensitive of God's creatures, that, you know, the most sensitive of the creatures on, on earth die first. In an environment where we rape the planet, the most sensitive of those creatures, so, so they all die first. Mm -hmm. And this is what's happening now. Every country on this planet has a large list of animals that are just dying off becoming extinct. And Unless they've lost the vast majority of their non-domesticated animals already. That's right. In which case right. their list is short, but it's still a significant loss to their well, entire ecosystem. The fact that ecosystem. many countries hardly have any, uh, any ecosystem left. Yeah. Is, is a, and therefore any animals or any native mm -hmm. species left is, a, is the consequence of past generations' behaviour. And we need to stop it, right? Mm -hmm. And the biodiversity on the planet is severely being affected um, by, you know, the biomass and diversity on the planet is severely being affected by all of our decision making yeah. here. And this is going to have a very, a very great negative consequence on, on our future life yeah. on the planet. So, so, yeah, we're going to bear the consequence of of eventually starving to death if we're not careful yeah. because of what we're doing to destroy the earth. Yes, yeah. yeah. And that would be a compensation in kind. Our selfish attitude and our lack of regard would mean for, for our environment yeah. would mean that eventually there is no environment mm. um, and that has very serious consequences. Yes, and clean water on the planet is becoming a major problem mm -hmm. and uh, clean fresh water that you can drink without processing it is becoming yeah. a major problem. And, and as a result of that major problem, many, a lot of the, the next wars could actually be created by not having enough water to drink. Yes. And, yeah. and that'd be very sad if that happened. Very, yeah. yeah. Okay. So a lot of negative compensatory effects yeah, for a lack of regard for the environment. Yeah, and another one that most people don't consider is that after they pass, it's highly likely their environment will reflect their attitude towards the environment. Mm. So in other words, they might have a, be rich on earth and therefore be able to maintain a relatively nice environment while they're here. But when they pass, they're going to be living in a hovel, in a dirty, smelly hovel and wondering why they were there. Yeah. You know, partly it's going, to be because it's going to be because of their soul condition, yeah. but also partly it's going to be because of their soul condition created by their lack of care of their environment mm. and the subsequent results spiritually that they are creating as a result after they pass yeah so yeah many people get a shock like that and mm. particularly very rich people get yeah. a big shock yeah when they pass um because of their treatment and the way they've treated people and the environment they often end up in a terrible condition and as a result of that terrible condition 
live in dirty, smelly hovels mm. with no colour or mm. life in them and wonder what has gone on. Yeah. And, uh, and it's completely because of their attitude to, yeah. to things like this. Yeah. Mm. Compensation in kind by having gratitude for the generosity in others. Yes. <laughs> Good one. So in this example, um, a person creates, presents, or gifts free material or free products um, mm. to the world. Mm. And I partake of the, that product. I take that product and use it or I um, attend a lecture or a seminar and I ask a lot of questions and I try and apply what, what's presented to me. Mm -hmm. um, I download a free, free piece soft of software, software that uh, that I use over and over every day. It's so yep. wonderful to, yep. that you can do that. And in addition to that, I show my generosity to whoever I've received the gift from by giving to them of my personal resources yep. and be, time, be energy, the time, energy or money. Funny finances. Yep. Because I want to assist them to continue to do what they do. I want to um, help them continue in their efforts. Yeah. So, and, I, and I promote their products. Yeah. I, pro I would promote what they're doing, you know, like mm -hmm. in my day-to-day -day life as yeah. well, wouldn't I? Like, yeah. you know, we, we do that a lot with software we use because we use a lot of software that's sort of like open source software. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, we donate to those uh, suppliers of open source yeah. software, but we also promote their products in our day-to-day -day life going, yeah. oh, this is fantastic. Like, yes. what, this person's given a great gift. How much time and energy and effort they've spent giving yeah. this gift is amazing what some people do yeah. some people their whole lives is 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 just designing things like public or open source software yeah. for example their whole yeah. life they they live off of it because of the people Donation. because of people seeing that they were generous first and and people yeah. wanting to be generous in return you yes. know like yeah. yeah so it's a wonderful way of living in society and there are many examples in today's society where it occurs yes yep. so what kind of benefits in kind would I receive when I have when now I'm not talking about the gift giver I'm talking about me having the generous uh, the sorry the appreciation for their generous attitude yes so. so so let's look at the attitudes again because the attitudes are all about the conversations all about the attitudes correcting so the attitudes, the attitudes in me even, not yeah. the attitudes in them yeah. attitudes, the attitudes in, me. in me who's grateful so so if I have an attitude or behavior that expresses my gratitude now yeah. now the things that express my gratitude are that I use the product daily, mm -hmm. that I enjoy it, I promote it, and I contribute yeah. in some way towards it. Yeah. That would be expressing my gratitude. Yeah. If I have an attitude of gratitude, then I'm truly recognizing the gift of other people and how important these gifts are. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and the value and of, the what's, value been of, of yeah. what's been given. In yeah. terms of their time, their energy, their resources, mm -hmm. their intellect, their education and everything that's gone into producing these particular things that are that i'm benefiting from yes mm. yeah so that's my number one attitude i'm displaying mm. um and i also understand the truth that what's being given was not owed to me it's a gift it's a gift it's I'm wonderful not, i'm not entitled to it it's something that someone chose no, to they, give. they come up with an idea and just went ahead with it and yes. then decided to give it to me yes. like, how wonderful is that yeah that, that's just amazing that people are willing to do that you know and there's yes. like i said there's many hundreds of thousands of people on the planet at the moment that are doing it mm -hmm. um in all sorts of walks of life mm -hmm. it's just wonderful that they're doing it yes yeah and um, so in that, I'm appreciating the time that they've spent their resources into providing the gift yeah. and me doing something with that information or that product actually demonstrates how much I value it and the sincerity yeah. of their desire to give Let's it to me. Let's look at it, Phil. I'm not willing to contribute in some way like in terms of my time, my energy, my resources, my ideas or some, some way. If I'm not willing to contribute in any of those ways, then am I really sincere that I'm grateful about yeah, yeah. Them, how giving the gift in the first yeah, place? Yeah. No, definitely not. Yeah. Right. So, so gratitude results in action. It doesn't just come out of your words. Oh, isn't it great that that person did this? Yeah. And then there's no other thought about it. That's yeah. not what it's like. You contribute to the product through your attitude. 
And even if it's a few dollars here or a bit of time there or something mm -hmm. that's regularly given, that's going to support the product and support the people who've given the gift of that product. And, and so that, that's a wonderful attitude to develop. But God loves those kind of mm -hmm. attitudes because it creates a cooperative. Yes. Where, yes. where society is now cooperating together to produce something. Yes. Yeah. 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 So there we're talking about two different types of actions that we're displaying. One is the giving back something and the one is the utilization of what you've been given. Oh, and it's also the promotion of it. And the promotion. And the promotion. Yeah. Like there's many different aspects to it. You know, you'd promote it with other people. Yeah. Have you heard about this? Yeah. Don't you think that's a fantastic <laughs> way? Are you using that? Yeah. You know, yeah. that kind yeah. of thing, yeah. you know. Yeah. We, we promote it rather than, you know, trying to pull it down or attack it. So all. that's all, all of what we've just um, described is all aspects of gratitude, really. Yes. A, a grateful attitude. Really good attitudes. Yes. Yeah, really good attitudes. So God, God thinks all of those attitudes are very much in harmony with with love with love with love truth and and all of god's principles and laws in fact mm -hmm. yeah. good com good rewards from all this <laughs> <laughs> well what kind of rewards in kind rewards remember we're talking about not just any reward the ones that are of the same flavor to what um what my attitude is displaying well, there's so many, and some of them are personal and some of them are more universal, you know. Mm -hmm. So obviously we've got personal ones in that if, if I am grateful for the time you've spent on something yeah. and, the give, and the gift you're given me, I won't have the expectation that you give it. I won't have demands towards you that you give it. I, I will be just, just ex expressive of, my gen of, your, of your gift and, and, and the thankfulness of the generosity of your gift by in turn wanting to support you continuing to be able to give the gift if possible mm -hmm. and uh and and so there's a whole series of things that i will probably do in that place you know uh be motivated to do and in doing that i'm supporting the gift giver the mm -hmm. person who was the original inception of the concept of mm -hmm. the idea now so that's a reward not that's me, not just a weird for me. That's for society. Yes, because now yeah. everyone in society can continue to benefit from that gift. Yes, um, so not just myself. I'm actually enabling. I'm also. I'm. I'm supporting conditions which will mean I receive more gifts, and other people will receive more gifts. Yes. Yep. 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 Um, also, people will appreciate my gifts, won't they? Well, yes. How does that work? Well, well, it's, if uh, if people around, if you have the attitude where you're grateful for the gifts of others, that automatically creates in people around you an, a, a concept of when they're receiving a gift from you. Yeah. They automatically start seeing when something is a gift that you're giving them. Because you're not engaged in a codependent barter with them. Yeah, they don't have they to don't pay have to give for you everything. anything emotionally in order to get it. Or, or financially. Or financially. Yeah. Um, then they'll start to see what you give as a gift That's because right. you view it as a gift. That's and right. therefore they'll be more appreciative. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And it encourages appreciation in the receiver. So my attitude of gratitude encourages people to be grateful with me. That's right. Yeah. For anything gifts you give. Yeah. Yeah. So then I'm also likely to receive more gifts personally myself. Yes. And also God's going to be much more generous with you because you're being generous with others. Yeah. You know, so, you know, I used to say in the first century, you know, if somebody asks you for something, give them twice what they've asked yeah. you for, you know. Yeah. Um, if, if somebody wants you to go one mile with them, go two miles with them, you know. Yeah. Because because that's the attitude of generosity, and God rewards those kind of attitudes of generosity mm. greatly. Mm. And uh, even though we might not experience the rewards on earth, I know people who have just been generous in their life on earth, and they've had no concept of God, no concept of an afterlife, no concept of you know religion or any other thing. They've just been generous on earth, and they've passed into the top of the first sphere in in, in quite a happy in, state. In quite a happy state. Yeah. Yeah, as a result, yeah, right. Hadn't yeah. had didn't even have to go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, what a benefit for that for your future life. Yeah, mm. yeah. Also, my sincerity in um, applying what I've heard or using the product I've been given 
brings immediate rewards to me anyway, doesn't it? Because I get the function of the software or I get the benefit of, um, of the knowledge of or, the knowledge or yeah. the uh, growth or yeah. whatever it is that I've gained through receiving and using the gift. Yeah, it's important to receive it and use it. Yes. Like, you know, I see a lot of people receive a gift and then they just store it in their cupboard. Well, what a waste. And, and is that appreciating the gift? You'd be better off if you can't use it, giving, give it, it giving it as another gift to somebody else. Yes. And this is why I say to people who have big stores of clothes in their cupboards or whatever that yep. they don't use, like just go through and have a good clean out of the whole thing and give it away because yeah. Because at the end of the day, you know, somebody should be using it. Yes. You know, that, you know, this is a, the spirit of generosity is that there's all these resources and the majority of us, because of, you know, different feelings of lack that we have, we tend to store them rather than, rather yes. than use them ourselves or pass them on. And that, because uh, I've been talking a lot to people about that lately as well with my wardrobe, it, 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 when you pass things on like that, you also reduce the amount that, the demand for new things because because you're sharing the resource that's already been created that's right and it's not decaying in your wardrobe so it has or, an environmental effect as yes, well so yes, it has a relative generosity yes. effect yeah <laughs> so that's a reward yeah okay um uh, we've mentioned the appreciation people appreciating me because i appreciate them it's like a value for a person and their mm. efforts and their will and desire but it's an expressed value yes you know i i don't like nowadays how you see a lot of times people rave on about how great something is and then you ask them have you ever donated to it no yeah <laughs> you know what i mean like well you know or have, have you, you ever applied what they suggest have you ever applied or... what they what you learned from yeah. them no yeah. have you ever have you ever put a resource into helping them no yeah. like you're full yeah. of bullshit really <laughs> to be frank you know sorry for the french but yeah. the reality is we are often full of crap yeah when we start praising something without actually having any true sincere yeah. demonstration of gratitude for it definitely mm. definitely mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> and of course um when i pass i'm going to be rewarded in a in kind way in mm. that many gifts will be uh piled upon me really won't they if i've had this truly gr grateful attitude yes yeah. you know obviously you know god rewards people in the way that he's he sees them operating so if he sees you as a generous person you will also be rewarded generously. Yeah. And of yeah. course, a truly generous person isn't focused on the reward. No. So, you know, God knows that too. Yes. You know, he'll see whether you're focused on getting a reward out of being generous yeah. or whether you're just generous because it comes from your heart and you're not getting a reward. So there's many times people on earth are generous. Like I notice this with a lot of open, open source software developers, they get very few donations mm. and and often they are crying out for, you know, more funds, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to continue their work. They get very few donations, but a lot of people use their product. Mm. You know, that's not that's not very good. That demonstrates that most of us have this feeling of lack where we just want something free, mm. but are not willing to to help the person who's giving it in any way. Mm. And that, that demonstrates a very poor attitude, obviously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Compensation in kind by exploiting the generosity in others. Mm -hmm. So this is the converse of our previous example, which is that when a person creates or presents or gifts material um, and I partake of their product, I might attend their lecture, I might download their software, and I might even ask a lot of questions and put sort of um, requests upon their time mm -hmm. uh, and further further requests upon their resources. resources. Um, but I don't actually do anything with what I'm given. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't apply what I'm told. I don't use the product. Um, and I also never donate my time, my money, um, any of my resources, any even personal energy or effort to assist them to continue to do what they do, even though I want to partake in it in some way. Mm. So it, let's look at the attitude that we have in that case and then talk about what mm. the penalties would be. Yeah, so again, we're compensations looking at the attitude and wanting to correct it. So, yeah. so let's look at the attitude. Obviously, I've got a feeling of entitlement mm -hmm. that, I, that I should get things for free 
and I shouldn't have to do anything for them or, or, or you know, people should just give things to me without any, without any, with my, without me considering anything other than the fact that I deserve them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I deserve it, so you should give it. Yeah, yeah, and obviously I'm pretty selfish because I'm selfishly using the the time, energy and resources of other people Yeah. without any concern for whether it's even going to last. If yeah. everyone, if everybody had the my attitude, would it last? Mm-hmm. Probably not, right? Mm-hmm. And if the pe- persons weren't generous in the first place, would it last? Yeah. No, it wouldn't. No. And yet my attitude is demonstrating that I don't care what people have invested. I don't care about their time, energy and resources. I don't, I just care that I'm getting it for free. Isn't it great type of thing? I don't even value their generous nature. I don't even no. place a value upon that or see no. it as something that's important or special or unique or yeah. wonderful. I yes. just think, great, I've got it. Great, I got it for free. Yeah. I don't have to pay for that. Isn't that yes. fantastic? Yes. It's, it's la- like going to the buffet and eating like four times what you... Because it's free. Yeah, what yeah. you... What you need. Need. And a lot of people do that. They do, or they go to someone else's place for dinner and eat yeah. like far exceeding what they would eat in their own and prepare yeah. for themselves. Or they go or... for a, to an all-you-can-eat restaurant yeah. and, and they eat a lot more than they would normally. Yeah. yeah. And that's all demonstration that, you know, that their attitude of generosity is very, very poor. Yeah. But they the, don't value generosity. They don't value generosity. They yeah. don't value gifts. Yes. Right? And obviously it all generates a lack of care and appreciation for people and, yeah. and, and obviously demonstrates also that you view yourself as superior to the person yes. because you deserve it without having to contribute anything. Yeah. So these are terrible attitudes, of course, and God's, gonna, God's laws are going to try to correct them. Yes. Mm-hmm. So let's look at what kind of penalties we'd reap. The in-kind penalties, so of the same flavour of what my attitude is, I'm going to have penalties in that, that same feeling. Well, firstly, I make it more difficult for the gift giver to continue giving their gifts. So that means that I am going to receive less gifts yes. over a period of time than I'm currently receiving. Yeah. Everything is going to be charged to me yes. rather than being given as a gift any, anymore. Because people can feel my desire to exploit things yep. and they're either going to be repelled by it or feel they need to protect themselves yeah. by charging something. And they'll stop doing it. Yeah. They'll stop providing that resource for free. for free they'll now start charging for it obviously yeah. which yeah. is you see this trend as well a lot in society yes. where people who in the past have been doing things for free have found that people just exploit them and use mm-hmm. them and whatever and so after a while they start charging for it yeah because yeah. they're trying to deal with the fact that they can't continue to do it unless they charge for it which yeah. is very sad it you is. know all the people who provide things for free we, we should help them provide them for free. If they have value to society, I'm not suggesting that if, you know, if it's of no value to society at all, then why would you share, you know, yeah. why would you support it at all? Of course you wouldn't. No. Um, but anything that is of value to society, that's in harmony with God's truth and love, that is in harmony with making your life easier and therefore more enjoyable, and it, and it doesn't severely degrade the environment or any of those other considerations, then why would you not support them in what they do? So, so that even if you don't benefit personally, that other people could. Yeah. It makes no sense to not to yeah. do it. You know, to not do it. So. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And and eventually, what's going to happen is people are going to be so repelled by my personal attitude that they'll make sure that they demand every ounce of you mm-hmm. know flesh from me yes. because of my attitude. So they're not going to be generous with me. I'm not generous. No. Uh, I'm not grateful for generosity, and in the end, I'm going to end up uh, with, uh, surrounded by people who are not generous with me. That's right, and I, and anything they do for me, I'm going to have to pay for. Yeah, I'm, they're going to make sure of it because of they're making a point. You're not a generous <laughs> person. <laughs> I'm going to make you pay for it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Unfortunately, that's the it's not a correct attitude from God's perspective, but that's certainly the attitude that develops in people, yeah. and it's understandable to a degree. It is given the fact that uh, our lack of grateful gratitude generates that kind of feeling in the other person. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okie doke. And what else? When we pass? Well, when we pass, obviously, um, we're not going to get very many gifts from anybody, actually. We're going to have to pay our pound of flesh, Mm. as the saying goes, for everything we receive. Mm. There is going to be very few people who want to help us Mm -hmm. with anything in our life. Mm -hmm. And given the fact that most of us are very uneducated about our spirit life, 
and we're going to need a lot of education, but there'll be no one around us to give it yeah. because nobody wants to. They all want to take instead. And and also even um, quite highly developed and loving spirits are not going to give under those circumstances no. because they would be enabling you to maintain an issue that's causing a degradation of your Well, our soul. heart is not open to the gift. Yes. So, so unless there's a pure desire, then they're not going to respond. Mm. So the reality is no one will respond. Yeah. No one will. And I often feel that because it, um, there's kids now who, who are raised sort of with this lot of feelings of entitlement. And yeah. I often feel that the best way to love them is to, to reflect to them, you know, how much they're taking and how unpleasant that is, you know. Yeah, and and to not give to them no, you can't. time, attention, any kind of resource. No, yeah. you can't. You've got to, but you can talk to them about why. Yes. You need to discuss why with them, yeah. obviously. Yeah. You need to educate them. Yes. Uh, as God educates his children, you need Certainly. to educate him, the, your own children to not, to not expect these things. Yeah. Obviously, that's the other thing, too, is that. A person who is in this state of just sucking the life out of everyone around them, mm -hmm. not seeing that what people give them is a gift. And when it comes to receiving from God, you're not going to receive anything from God, actually. No. Uh, aside from your, uh, what I classify as your, you know, necessities for living. Yeah. So air to breathe, yeah. <laughs> food to eat, water to drink. You're not going to receive much else Yeah. Uh, from anybody. And... The more of a taking attitude you have, the less inclined people around you are going to be yeah. to support your existence. And they'll eventually end up wanting to take from you, won't they? Well, they'll eventually want to make the point of it. Yeah. You know, that they might not do that with other people, no. but with you, they'll want to make the point of it. <laughs> <laughs> does that make yeah, sense? it does. They'll be drawn by your attitude. Yeah. into saying no that's enough you're just a user yeah you, you don't support anything you're just a user yeah 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 mm. okay mm. compensation in kind by caring for my physical environment so in this scenario i'll give you the scenario um i'm someone who participates in housework and cleaning of my environment I consider the desires of the people I live with, say my partner, I think about their workload and their time demands, and I'm willing to do the work that I need to do to care for my home environment. And also perhaps willing to give the gift of that to, to others you live with as well. Yes, especially household. if I can see that they have other time constraints or workload that is, um, you know. Not the same as mine. Not the same as mine, mm. yeah. Mm. yeah. So you could say here's an example where many relationships fail because, uh, you know, many men have the expectation that their women, you know, go to work but also come home and do all the work at home as well. Yeah. You see this attitude in a lot of male dominant societies like in third world, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of third world and a lot of uh, Asian nations as well yeah. where the male is sort of the boss of the household and has a huge amount of demands upon the domestic side of the mm -hmm. chores in, so in, in terms of the relationships yeah and uh, this obviously uh, is going to if you're positive about it can create a lot of goodwill in your family and in your relationships and in your household yes mm. if you do take responsibility for it and obviously if you are someone with the extra time demands and workload but you have this attitude that it is a part of my responsibility you will you will feel not entitled to it. That it's a gift if someone takes up the slack for you for a week or two or does whatever that needs That's to right. be done. Every yeah. you'll see everything they do as a gift. Yeah. Yes. So so there's a lovely so a lot of good attitudes here, isn't mm -hmm. there? Mm -hmm. Again, the law of conversation works upon the attitudes and the desires. So a lot of good attitudes. I've got I've got a sense of responsibility for myself. Yep. I also have respect for others. Yes. I have care of others. I respect the well-being of the other household members. Yeah. I respect the use of their time and their energy and their resources. Mm -hmm. I respect the use of their their will. In other words, I don't force them to do things for me yeah. that I'm unwilling to do for myself. Yes. Uh, these are all very good attitudes, which mm -hmm. will obviously be rewarded by the law. Yeah. So mm. let's talk about how they're going to be rewarded. Sure. 
Firstly, obviously, I'm going to have a closer relationship with anyone who I'm sharing a home with. Of course, that, instead of them all being resentful of you living <laughs> in their space yeah. or being resentful of you, you know, not contributing your fair share, yeah. they're going to go, no, this person's all fair with me and, and I feel real comfortable with the person. It's all just, the relationship is just. Mm. Uh, and and they'll, they'll feel like they're being considered and 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 uh, they'll feel that you're kind and caring of them. Now that's going to, if it's your partner, that's probably going to open them up sexually and emotionally yes. quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, so you might find uh, and definitely improve sexual and emotional relationship with your partner. Mm -hmm. But if it's not your partner, but it's just other members of the household, they're all going to be happy with you living in their house. They're yeah. not going to be feeling like we're going to kick them out as soon as we possibly can. <laughs> They're not going to be concerned about how much of their resources you're taking up mm. anymore. They're going to feel uh, probably quite generous towards you because you're generous with them. Yes. Um, so your generosity and care towards them fosters a relationship where there is more care and generosity very likely to be displayed towards you. Yes. Yeah. Notwithstanding all that, you'll have a lot less conflict. Uh, most yeah. relationships on earth, are, there's a lot of conflict, you know, where people are argumenting, argue, arguing, they're argumentative mm -hmm. with each other. They it, have a sort of hidden resentments that they kind of hold on to and it comes out in other explode. scenarios. And yeah, so, you know, if somebody is not cleaning their environment for week on end, week on end, they leave it. Even just a little thing like leaving your dirty underwear and socks on the ground, never putting it away, never washing them. You're always expecting someone else to do it. After a month of that, the average person is going to get pretty annoyed with you. Yeah. And uh, and there's going to be some conflicts, obviously, yeah. and you're creating them. Yeah. You know, it's not yeah. it's not their fault. It's yeah. your fault. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I'm also going to, this respect for myself is going to lead me to have a better sense of my own worth and self-respect, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, a person who has a good sense of their worth cares for their environment and a person who cares for their personal environment usually also grows. generates a better, or grows a better respect for themselves. Yeah. So, you know, the two things are interchangeable in some ways and so, you know, we're mm. going to have a better opinion of ourselves in the long run mm. other people will have a better opinion of us too yeah obviously yeah you know because yeah. they know that we're contrib contributing to society in such a way that we're not expecting other people to to bear the consequence of our laziness or poor behavior mm. or poor attitude mm. Mm. any kids i have are going to also inherit very likely to inherit this sense of self-responsibility for care of the physical environment. Yes, yes, yeah. uh, they're going to probably copy their mum and dad's uh, behaviour mm -hmm. and if they don't, mum and dad will very quickly correct them yeah. because mum and dad know that every person in this environment needs to be self-responsible. Mm -hmm. So instead of mums and dads doing everything for their children, which we see a lot happening nowadays, and running them around everywhere, you know, the children having all these very high expectations of their parents, the children will know, no, no, I've got to become self-responsible. I've got to start looking after myself and looking after getting myself around the place and doing the things I'm responsible for. And that's going to create in the child, by the time they're an adult, a very good attitude towards society. They're going to be contributors in society. So um, do we ever see the case where there's a parent who is very self-responsible for their environment, but who has a competing addiction with their children uh, and they end up kind of discouraging self-responsibility? Certainly mo yeah. most parents I observe in the modern era in Western society are actively discouraging their children from being self-responsible. Mm -hmm by doing everything for their children. Mm. And this is a very, very bad thing to do for your children because those children will grow up being dependent upon others and dependent upon society without being contributors. And so you end up with a whole generation of people who are unable to contribute to society without there being a demand of something in return. So damaging. Very, very damaging. But but then could I then is our statement really correct that if I'm self responsible then my children will kind of imbibe that attitude from me. It's not necessarily true, is it? Well, no, well, it's partially say, true. Yep. It, it requires that as well as some consistency in some yes. other areas where I'm not yep. feeding the addictions of my children or trying to feel like I'm a great parent or yep. trying to be my child's mate instead of feeding being my, my child's parent. Feeding my own addiction, or basically. Trying, yeah, yep. so, so there are often competing addictions. Yep. If a person doesn't have competing addictions but has this attitude, then it's going to have a very positive effect on their children. Got you. Yeah. Yeah. 
And then um, guests coming to my home will also feel more motivated to um, be self-responsible. Be self-responsible. And I know that... Which, is, which um, means that they're going to be less... Uh, you know, they're going to require less maintenance, yeah, the guests. <laughs> that's right. But I know it's something um, that my dad used to say to me because it used to clean holiday homes and also have rental homes. Hmm. That if you leave the environment in a good condition, people who come into it are more likely to treat it in a good way. That's right. Whereas if you leave it in a shabby condition, they're more likely to feel the lack of regard for the environment and treat it badly as well that's right so that's a compensation in kind really isn't it that's right yeah, yeah. on the negative end we're talking yeah. about the positive well the positive <laughs> if you leave it well yes then, then the, the positive people leave, treat it well people yeah. be encouraged to to treat it well yeah, yeah that's right yeah so yeah so and also um they often copy then they go wow that environment was pretty smooth when i was yes. living there everything was in its place i could find everything every time it wasn't all put in a different place we I find, felt calmer. Yeah, we find with some guests we have, they put everything in a different place than where they found it. Yes. It's, it's a very difficult, a very <laughs> difficult guest. I wonder what's going on <laughs> yeah. then. Yeah. And, and, and so I don't know what their personal life is like, but obviously they must find it very difficult to find some things. <laughs> um, but, but when everything's put in exactly the same place, every time everything's put in, you know, even just a simple thing like that, mm -hmm. Everything runs a lot more smoothly yeah. and it's a lot easier and it's a lot easier to have those people as guests then as well. And people, as you were starting to say, people are more encouraged when they return to their home environment to implement some of those. Some of those same considerations. Same considerations. Yeah. So mm. it has a flow on benefit in kind for not just yourself, but for society really. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Compensating in kind for not caring for my physical environment. So my personal environment. My yeah. personal environment. Yeah. So in this case, I, I'm always expecting my partner or the people that I live with, maybe my parents or just other people in my environment, mm -hmm. um, to do the housework. I never take part. So what's going on? Yeah, it sounds like some people <laughs> I know. <laughs> The Yeah, well, it demonstrates some very bad attitudes, actually, doesn't it? So mm -hmm. obviously God's laws are going to be correcting these poor yep. attitudes. So let's look at some of them. Firstly, I definitely have a lack of love for other people. Yeah. Um, now, anything that's to do with a lack of love for other people, God's laws are pretty severe on that. Yes. In terms of, when I say severe, very much about correcting that straight the away. So the negative the consequences are yes. quite yeah. high. Yeah. And um, so lack of love... A lack of appreciation for the time, energy, resources of other people, because I'm, I, I'm really, uh, um, I, I've got a lack of respect for the gift of free will. Yeah. Here, what what I'm basically demonstrating is that I'm basically saying that I'm not going to do what I should be doing to look after myself. Mm -hmm. I'm going to expect you to do all that for me. Yeah. Now, what that's basically saying is my time, and energy and resources are more important than yours and i am going to try to force you mm. really that's what i'm doing I'm either well, by the environment becoming dirty yeah. i am forcing you who wants it cleaner <laughs> to have to do something about well, it. to make a choice either live in a dirty environment or clean up my, after me or argue with me or argue with me <laughs> three choices that are not very nice none of them are very nice no. or they have to leave you one yeah. of, one of the four, yeah, four really yeah yeah and ideally, they should leave you, really, mm. rather than do the other three. But, mm. but most, you know, it's very frustrating when you're in an environment where somebody's constantly being dirty, constantly not putting things back in the same places, constantly being, you know, you know unclean with, with the way they do everything, ne uh, never leaving them in the way they found them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very, very frustrating living in that environment when you're a person who does exactly the opposite. Yep. And really, that person is forcing you to make a number of choices, that all of which are not very nice. Yeah. One is that you've either got to choose to not live with them anymore, yeah. and if you love them, you probably don't want to do that. You've, you've got to choose to clean up after them, and that's very, not very nice because that, you know, that takes your time and energy and resources. Or you ignore all of their you know, stuff, dirty stuff they've left around the place, and so now you've got to live in their bad environment, mm. right? or you have to argue with them. Yeah. <laughs> to try to get them to tidy up after themselves. Yeah. And that's not nice either. Having yeah. to argue with someone every day to tidy up after themselves is, is very, is very, you know, 
unkind yes. thing that we're imposing. And you were someone. relating it to the will. You're basically forcing the will of others into a scenario that they wouldn't have to have no, otherwise. They wouldn't yeah. have to engage any of that yes. if you were doing the right thing here. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so you're not respecting God's gift of free will. Yeah. yeah, which is which makes is it quite major, serious. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a major thing from yeah. God's perspective. Yeah, yeah. So you you're not respecting the other pe- members of your household. No, you're also not taking any responsibility for your for environment, self. yourself, <laughs> exactly. and your environment for your self care for your for what God sees as your responsibility. That's right. Yeah, yeah that's right. Um, yeah. So it's all pretty serious, really. It's actually quite serious, and yeah, yeah so a simple thing of like a child not tidying up their room every day has severe consequences on their on their soul based condition. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So mm-hmm. let's talk about some of the compensation we reap in kind for yeah. this kind of attitude. Yeah, well the first thing is that I destroy um, my relationship with other people. Mm. Because other people know I'm being unjust with them, I'm being unfair, mm-hmm. and they obviously are not going to respond very well to that. So I am actively destroying my relationships here. Yeah. So I can't blame them when they walk out on me. No. I can't. No. Because I'm, I've, I've taken the action of destroying the relationship. I've also created conflict in my relationship because they have to correct my behavior all yep. the time. So I'm now creating conflict all the time. I'm the source of the conflict. Mm. So, you know, not the person who's complaining that no. I'm untidy. They're not the source of the conflict. Mm. I am because yep. I choose to be untidy. Yes. Right. I choose to have a lack of responsibility. That's my conflict. I'm So any argument they have with me is my I'm the source of it. Mm-hmm. From God's perspective, mm-hmm. I am the source. Mm-hmm. I'm creating the conflict. Yeah. 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 I develop uh, usually over time a lower sense of self-worth because I'm living in a pigsty. Yeah. You know. If uh, nobody's correcting it. If isn't nobody's it? correcting yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, I'm living in a pig a pigsty. Mm. Um, eventually, I'll be tolerant of a pigsty. Yeah. And eventually, you know, that demonstrates my own lack of self-worth. Actually. Yes. It doesn't feel good. No. In the end, you're not going to feel good living in a pigsty. No. Right. Yeah. Um, any child I have will feel that they can treat their environment just as bad as what I treat my environment. Yes. So naturally, they are not going to be inclined after a while to live in my environment. They have to be dirty, basically. Yeah. Um, you know, either they're going to rebel against that mm-hmm. and just get really upset about it all the time and eventually not want to live there. Yeah. Or they are going to become like me. Yeah. Either one's not good. Well, in <laughs> either case, I'm either my lack of love uh, for others is creating a situation where I'm more divided from others, more separate from others, yeah. or I'm degrading the condition of others, others. around. One of the two. Yeah. Uh, that, that's, so and my, that's the only choice I'm giving them. I'm, I'm only giving the choice to separate from me or to put up with me. Yes. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> so if we bring it back to the conversation in kind, basically my lack of regard for others is creating a situation where I'll be more distant from others, either emotionally or emotionally and physically yeah. distant from others. Yeah. yeah. Because of my lack of care for them and myself. Yes. Um, obviously, guests in my environment will uh, feel not motivated towards yeah. caring for my yeah. environment. So yeah. anybody comes into my environment, well, wow, this is a pigsty. Either it's too smelly or too bad for me to be in. Yes. So I don't want to come to your place at all. Yeah. Yeah. Or if I do, I just treat it the same way. You know, I'll just throw yeah. my yeah. rubbish <laughs> over the shoulder just like you do. <laughs> you know I mean? or, or if I'm someone who's a guest with good self-worth and I come into an environment like that, I'm not going to want to stay. No, not at all. No. Like yeah. I, I've been so, in some environments when I was a Jehovah's Witness knocking on doors. There was one place I remember clearly. The la- the lady had twenty two cats and fourteen dogs in her house. Yeah, and they were like it smelt. Yeah, so bad that when you open the door, you almost completely passed out because of yeah. the smell. And and she didn't clean up any of it. No. And and in fact, uh, I know that when she died, they they decided just to bulldoze the house Yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> even though it was a good house, yes. they bulldozed the house because it was too hard to clean. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that kind of environment, obviously terrible, terrible environment for anybody as yes. a guest to walk to into. To walk into, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Mm. All right. Um, we've talked about the divisions in relationships, but specifically if I'm expecting my partner to make up the difference if you like to Mm. actually clean this environment see we haven't talked much about that but often there's an expectation that's met 
on the part of the partner. The partner. To sometimes clean... for addictive reasons and sometimes out of resentment. Yes. Yeah. But the met expectation to clean up after me is that's done. And so I, d I often avoid some of the other penalties that we've just spoken about until I enter the spirit world. Mm. Um, but if that is the case, my partner is going to get very disinterested in me sexually and emotionally. And likely become vicious with me, in fact, yeah. in the end, because it's, it's, it, I'm being very unloving for long periods of time. Yeah. Unfortunately, the average person doesn't just leave a person under those circumstances. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they stay and stay and stay and stay and the resentment builds and builds and builds and builds and builds and, builds and to the point that there's hardly any love between them at all, at all. anymore. Yeah. Uh, just because of this bad behaviour, yeah. they might like the other aspects of your nature or personality, but but this is it's very hard to tolerate this over long periods of time. Yes. Mm. And if you do have this scenario where the pa partner is meeting the expectation, then the ch your children will also have this feeling that, yeah, it, that's right, that you do that. Yeah, so and the children are going to grow up having expectations of their partner Yes. To tidy up after them. Yes. What, what, a, what a terrible thing you're putting on the next generation. If, if of you're relationships. A woman, of yeah. the next generation of relationships. As, you know, women, you see this happen a lot with mothers with their sons. Yes. They, mothers expect their daughters to tidy up after them, mm -hmm. but don't expect their sons to. So what yeah. do their sons grow up to be? Yeah. yeah. Men who expect their women to do yes. all of these unkind, it's unkind expectations upon their women. Totally. To do all of these things. Now, eventually those women are going to feel they're not loved. And yeah. they're right. They're not. <laughs> they're not. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. naturally, after a while, they say, you don't love me, I'm off. Yes. You know, that's yeah. how they're going to feel. Yeah. And it, it is very common that this happens between men and women and women are doing the work. But I know just from observing your example, when you were raising a family, often it was you doing that work. And I observe your boys have more of an expectation on you than they far they they have almost no expectation of their mum mm. and um that's obviously something that you've worked through now emotionally mm. but mm. um that dynamic was happening in opposite genders in yes. your in your home yes yeah. it's probably rare but yeah, it's <laughs> i probably haven't rare. seen too many examples yeah. of it uh, i've seen a few probably a few in my maybe. work life yeah, yeah a few maybe but yeah um usually it's one or the other that yeah. picks up the slack isn't it and yes and it's it's a it's a terrible thing to have to pick up the slack yeah. because you you know you're not loved yeah and you know you, you have to be honest about it in the end with yourself mm -hmm. you have to go to yourself well you know there's there's no love here even though yeah. the person might say they love you or whatever they don't really care about you at all if they're doing these kind mm. of things mm. Mm. yeah okay so you know obviously you're now also forcing a whole heap of emotions mm -hmm. That the person who who is having to do all this work unjustly mm -hmm. is now going to have to feel. And so mm. this is how the in-kind compensation kind of happens, isn't it? It's like I say it's you and me. Um, I lack regard for you in the initial sense. And then I continue to live in that and act in that. I'm sowing this mm -hmm. lack of regard for you. Mm -hmm. And basically what's happening is it, this the same flavor of problem is going to increase. Sooner and, or later, I'm gonna feel the lack of regard. Yes, so then that creates more problems in terms of the lack of regard and, and it's the, also going to mean within the relationship. If I don't know how to deal with my emotions. You're gonna resent me. I'll and get more and more resentful. Lack of regard for me. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's generally what happens. Yeah. And if I did feel my emotions, what would I do? Leave. I'd leave. Yeah. And, and so then I'd have then no have one with no any one regard with for any me. any regard. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. you know, either way, I'm going to end up in a, in a place where I've created something worse than I had. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a lot of very negative effects for not caring for your personal environment, not mm. cleaning up after yourself and so mm. forth. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you.